how we are a little over halfway in our walk we're having to do. Uh, this is kind of filmed on a border. I'll be telling you the story once I actually sit down and can breathe. But Lucy and I needed to catch our breath a minute, huh? Oh, she's been such a good girl to do this with me. We're by Crane Point. I just had to admire this train for a while. Catch my breath. Future Christina here, just coming in to give a brief little story to try to fill in some gaps that I'm not sure we ever really discussed in the scope of all the filming and the chaos that was happening with the car. You saw us having Subway from that store in Marathon. After we finished our food, Mark went to start the car. It would not start. He got out and tried our jump box because we have one of those little emergency kit roadside boxes that you know you can inflate the tire with jump the battery, any of that would not work. So Mark kind of thought maybe it's getting low on power. It's one of those rechargeable things. And maybe it had just, you know, gotten low on power because he had put air in the tire earlier that day. So we did arrange for a tow truck to stop by to try to um, boost us, give us a boost. And same thing, he had a box even more high tech than ours. And he said, no, he goes, I don't know. In his opinion, it wasn't our battery. Alas, down the road we found out it was and we did have to have it replaced. But there we were, stuck in Marathon. Uh, in order for our warranty to cover anything, we knew that the car would have to be towed to a Chevy dealership, which Marathon is halfway basically on the Keys. You had a choice where it would have to be either towed back to Key West or towed to Homestead, which obviously we live closer to Homestead, so that would make more difference. But obviously that was not gonna really happen on a Sunday night and have all that arranged. Luckily, the, the Tom Thumb we were at there in Marathon was really nice. Let us, uh, they agreed to let us leave the car there overnight. The only thing we knew what to do is jump on Expedia. And there you are, Easter night, <laughs> um, late, it was about six, 37 o'clock when all this was you know finally getting decided that we had to get a hotel room so I jumped on Expedia and literally you don't have much available I needed something pet friendly and I needed something that I could at least physically walk to I knew Mark and Teddy could Uber I wasn't sure you know if you're in big cities sometimes you can find an Uber that you can take your pet with you I just didn't want to chance that they're in marathon for all i know you probably only had one uber driver you know i didn't want to risk it so i needed something that i could walk to with lucy and that mark and teddy could uber to so that is what we did sadly that meant the only room i could find available was a huge suite at 360 dollars thank god i did have that available on an emergency card that i keep and we did um go ahead and so i did go ahead and i booked that room so this is a review kind of but fitting it in more vlog style i i texted ahead because i knew mark would get there ahead of me and I said, if you get into the room, if you have any power left on your cell phone, grab some clips for us. I knew I wasn't really technically doing like a really hearty, serious review, but it's the first time we've ever stayed down on the keys. So I wanted it for our memories. Plus I did kind of want to semi review it. So do know that going into this, we are going to show you our experience with this room, but it's not normally that high price. There's many other times a year you get that room for more like $230, not $360. You know, it is still spring breaks filtering through here. It was a weekend, it was Easter weekend. So just keep that in mind that this room is not actually really normally that insanely priced. And this was kind of a unique circumstance for us. But with all of that explained, please join us for this really cool room at this hotel. Good evening. Due to car difficulties, we had to get a room here in Marathon for the evening. We're staying at the Coconut K, wow. room 505, which actually is a fairly nice room. So Tay and I are gonna give you a tour, so why don't you come on in? Yeah, so as you walk in, okay, 
we have two maybe queen beds. Two queen beds. Okay, I'll do bedtime. Okay, he's gonna do bed science for us, okay. Three, two, one. Woo! How is the bed? Right now, now Better than the car, probably. So he's gonna try it on the next bed. Oh, oh. Nice. Boom. Okay, now All right, so then there were two closed doors. Huge television, by the way. Okay. And this is the bathroom. Oh, Teddy wants to show, show us the house. And for your seats inside, they're walking chairs. Yeah, you everybody's bathroom. Yeah, holy man, nice. So let's take a look at the bathroom. Yes, we do. Yeah. A little closet. Yeah, I like to go in it. You're going to go in the closet? In the closet, we have single sink. Hello. The reason Christina isn't doing this, she had to walk the dog from where the car broke down because Ubers don't take dogs. Uh, shower, no tub. And, of course, the commode. I'm taking a You're shower. You're taking a shower. Very nice. Ooh. Okay, now let me take it to the Okay. Oh. Did it work? Yes. Check. All right. Then we found another door. And it led to an eat-in kitchen. A table, stove and oven, microwave, K-cup machine, full refrigerator. Nice fan. Microwave? Yeah. Oven? Yeah. Fan? They were friendly in the lobby. The lobby has Coffee? like popcorn for a dollar and stuff like that okay. that you can bring in. That's locked. And? That's locked. So now let's go out and look at the porch. So maybe we can get some more footage in the morning of what it looks like when the sun's up. But that's. <laughs> Look at the size of that. So Teddy and I are going to sit and watch TV and wait for Christina and Lucy. Getting a little bit outside footage here before I have to send Mark back to the car. So we have this little area here with these two Adirondack chairs and one set of sliding doors and then another set of sliding doors with a picnic table and a grill. So really really nice actually yeah, this is nice right. out here. yeah right here on the canal this is this is really lovely Look at how that mangrove goes the mangrove yeah oh my gosh it is yeah so as you can see I hadn't yet got to this part we are right on the canal so if you had a boat you could park a boat right here Oh, we don't have a problem. We really is beautiful. Too bad this hadn't been under different circumstances, but hey, you gotta take the blessings where you can get them. Lucy wanted to come out and get some sniffs. So I can show you the front of our building and a little bit around the area here. There is a pool across the way. We won't be using that. We're we have to check out. Checkout is at 10. That's a little bit of an early checkout in my opinion. And there's no like lobby, breakfast, coffee, anything for an option. Not even like pastries or any of that. But I mean, these ones have kitchenettes and stuff, but I think some of the regular rooms don't. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I would ever come here on purpose if it wasn't a dire emergency that we were in last night, but maybe I would. It is beautiful. I do. The room was comfortable. Sitting on that canal is comfortable. I don't know. Maybe in a different season if it was a little bit uh, lower of a price. Anyway, going to walk back out around to the boys on the canal side here. As you can see, real nice. You have your front access and your back access. So if you do have a puppy dog, you can 
easily access grass and stuff for their needs for their potty breaks. Mostly, I think this morning she's on a, you know, all these new sniffs, all this new doggy social media to read. But yeah, um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to judge. That's why this is not really a, a true review, I guess, because the, you know, the idea was we got it on an emergency basis and didn't really have much choice in the matter. But I still wanted to show you guys what it was and everything. It is beautiful. Wow! That was cool, huh, Teddy? Wow! That, I'm glad I got my phone up in time for that. Yeah, the airport's right there, but wow, that was super cool. Getting ready to check out. So this room was obviously expensive because we're in like still spring break season. We looked it up a couple weeks from now, it drops to like 236. So if you were considering more of a normal rate, dad, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. I would. I like the canal and going out there in the morning and having a cup of coffee. You, it's good that you have a kitchen. So if you were bringing your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would do it. I mean, even they do have a Keurig. So even if you wanted to bring your own cake cup pods. That would be fine. Yeah. If you brought your own stuff to cook and stuff, I think it'd be nice. And Marathon's a good midway point, you know, going up and down for whatever. What about you, Teddy? Would you advise other kids your age to enjoy this? Yeah? yeah? We did like the rocking chairs. Mark and I were just sitting in those a little while ago. Uh, the TV's funky. It's a very strange cable package, but they have some interesting choices you don't see anywhere else. Yes, one more thought? We can go outside one more time before we check out, absolutely. But it is about that time. Um, we have sent our car north to Homestead, so now we gotta go rent a car to go catch up to it and try to get it fixed. So yeah, this was a odd emergency stay, but it was a blessing. It's kind of one of those hidden blessings in disguise that it just, at least if you had to be here, you know, it was a good one. I would not pay $360 again, but yeah, $230, a night or so to $250, I would pay. So today's adventure, continuing to walk up. So Sebastian was picked up by a tow truck this morning where it broke down. Lucy's chasing every kind of lizard and iguana and anything you name it. And uh, Mark Ubered down to meet the tow truck driver and sent it off. Uh, we have rented a car, so we're walking a mile from the hotel we were at to the airport here in Marathon to pick up our rental. All of us walking together <laughs> with our shopping bags because we couldn't get in the hatch of Sebastian even still to get backpacks and look like civilized people. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, it's all part of the adventure. We are practicing for the amazing race, right guys? Yeah. Trying to make it to the next pit stop. Hey, we always wanted to see the airport up close. Hey, is there something flying in? Oh yeah. Look, Teddy. Teddy's chasing airplanes. What did you think of that, Bob? And yes, we're all obviously wearing the same clothes we wore yesterday. <laughs> Just trying to stay positive, make the best of it. So we are walking on a path up northbound alongside Route 1. Ah, success. So we're leaving the Marathon Airport, headed to at least Homestead. I haven't heard any word from the Chevy dealership in Homestead yet. We're gonna stop and get some snacks, some drinks, and then just pluck our way to Homestead and try to de-stress. I don't get many rental cars, but I thought this would be a good idea that for your verification, take some video and some pictures of what it looks like before you leave the lot. 
Just if you need verification that this is the condition you picked it up in. I'm walking around, kind of doing a 360, taking a few pictures. We're all joking we aren't gonna want Sebastian back. I'm sorry, Sebastian. Oh, this is nice. Oh, and it's roomy. Oh, well, we all knew Sebastian was bought on an emergency purpose. The way he's treating us. We aren't gonna keep him long, are we? No. Oh my, look. All kinds of bells and whistles. <sighs> Leaving Key Largo. Oh, oh, about 16 hours later than we thought. <laughs> In a rental car. Oh, wow. Ten minutes later. Ten minutes later, like the SpongeBob thing. Oh. Ten minutes later. So we we will come back again someday, but probably not anytime soon. Certainly not gonna try to come back again before we move to Texas. So I have talked to the Chevy dealership, and uh, they are working on Sebastian. I don't know. They're going to put in a diagnostics test a couple hours from now. They'll give us a call. Tell us what they might be finding. So. That's going to do it. For this journey. <laughs> Way later than I thought we were going to be wrapping it up. Last look at that crystal, very cool colored water. So. Dad, I want your final thoughts of all the visits you've ever had down here on the Keys. What is your favorite thing you've ever seen or done or eaten? Putting you on the spot. Key lime pie. Okay, which place? Kermit's? Probably Kermit's. There's a lot of places that had good key lime pie. Yeah, you, it, it, there's nothing else like having it down here. Right. It is different you get it anywhere else. It's not the same as having it down here. Okay, what else? Like Landmark or something that you've seen? Uh, the Fort Zachary Taylor I really enjoy. I like the time we went to Key West and walked along the boardwalks there. Along the piers and stuff. Oh, Christmas time? Is that, yeah, it was Christmas time. Yeah, all the Christmas lights, lights and yeah. stuff like that. I thought that was cool. Um, Bass Pro and Isla Mirada. You know what? Seeing the, the tarpons yeah. uh, eating, Mama. like people feeding them, yeah. and how big a tarpon it actually was. Yes, it's like amazing. It's massive. That's probably the highest thing I've ever seen is the tarpons from feeding and the pelicans that were trying to steal the food. That was cool. Okay, wait a minute, Teddy, you wanna chime in? Give you a little bit of a look. That's better than looking at us that have all been in our clothes and you name it for well over 24 hours now. Yeah, I'd be excited to someday come back. Come back and maybe stay someplace. I mean, finding that place last night, like we talked about. It was kind of an emergency grab, and we paid way more than we would ever realistically pay normally, but right. we wouldn't come in peak season like that. Right. So if we were to come at a more normal season, you know, I don't. Teddy's, Teddy's in that phase where he wants to argue and say the opposite of whatever we say. Just roll with it. But yeah, I'd even do that. I'd like to stay in Key West itself so I could get out and like walk around, especially like me, early morning when everybody else is hung over. I'd like to actually roam the streets of Key West when it's quiet. That would be my, my bucket list goal. We got back into Homestead and we were told, I don't really think I said this in video yet, that between Marathon and Homestead, I called the Chevy dealership. Supposedly it hadn't arrived yet. And finally we were close to Homestead and it said that they had finally gotten it and they told us they were they didn't think it was the battery but they didn't know um kind of went back and forth on it they were going to put it on the diagnostics machine because with a warranty that's what you have to do and they told us two hours and they'd let us know so we said okay finished our journey off the keys 
We got into Homestead, decided that we were all really hungry, so we went to lunch. Kind of had a nice little leisurely lunch. Uh, the boys went to Dairy Queen. I walked next door to a Poke Bowl place and got a Poke Bowl while the boys had Dairy Queen. And we all sat there and um, just kind of enjoyed it. And then we went to Starbucks and we thought, well, you know, it's been three hours. You know, and they had quoted us too, so I'll call in. So I called into the Chevy dealership and they're like, I don't know, we're still working on it, but we'll know a little bit later. And by that point, we were all so exhausted, felt so disgustingly filthy that, I mean, I had taken a shower and stuff at the hotel, but then you had to put back on your same dirty clothes. So, you know, and not brush my teeth or anything. So we felt awful. And we said, well, we're, we're gonna go ahead and go home to Flamingo. And I was told, okay, we'll let you know by way before close of business. And we waited, we got home to Flamingo, we waited and waited. They never called. Uh, they closed at seven, I started calling at 6.30, like every five minutes. I left voicemails, no return call, no answer. So fast forward to um, Tuesday morning, I they opened at seven and I started calling. We had to have the rental back to Homestead by 10.30. I started calling, started calling. And again, I would get the guy's voicemail. Um, I would try to speak to other people in the service department. They refused to speak to me, said I had to speak to that one specific person. Finally, it reached a point I didn't know what to do. So uh, I had to leave Lucy here. And Teddy and I went and took the rental car back to Homestead. Hold on a minute. Teddy needed help starting an audio book. So anyway, uh, Teddy and I got the rental car back to Homestead on time, you know, stopped, filled it up with gas, dropped it off. I would not recommend that Enterprise. The Enterprise guy in Marathon at the airport, he was awesome, awesome. The Enterprise people at Homestead, Florida City, technically, uh-uh, I would not go there if I didn't have to. But, uh, hold on. So it was all in my agreement that the drop-off was Homestead, yet they charged me 50 extra dollars for not uh, dropping it off in Marathon. However, they didn't tell me that. There was no communication when I dropped it off. She took the keys, she looked it over, came back in, said, you're all set. Later on, the guy in Marathon called me and he's like, they charged you 50 extra dollars, but I'm gonna fix that for you. And just wanted you to know that, you know, because I do have to fix it, it's gonna take a couple days to get to your deposit back. Because what they do is they, they put a hold on my card for 300 above what the charge was of the rental. So when I returned it, the Homestead people, the Florida City people docked me $50. So, but luckily the guy in Marathon fixed that. Still kept calling the Chevy dealership. By this time that was 1030. No answer, no response to voice messages. Nobody else would deal with me. I took Teddy to Golden Corral because we could walk next door from the Enterprise to a Golden Corral. I took Teddy to Golden Corral to get him some lunch because he was really hungry. By the time we walked out of Golden Corral, it's like 11.30 going on noon, still not returning my voicemail, still wouldn't answer the phone. So Teddy and I got an Uber from Golden Corral to the Chevy dealership there in Homestead. The guy tried saying, oh, still working on it. I uh, really was not happy with that attitude. So Teddy and I planted our butt right outside of the guy's office. And I have a picture of that to show you. Needless to say, after Teddy and I sat outside the guy's office door, I had the keys back to my car within 15 minutes with, you're all set, it was the battery. They changed the battery, you're good to go. Went to the cashier, got my paperwork showing zero charge and this and that. And then it was crazy because they sh told me where my car was. I went out to get in the car and we had to wait 20 to 25 minutes because we were blocked in before they finally moved cars to let me out. So really, 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 really crazy, crazy trip home from Key West. But thankfully it was just a battery. I find it odd though. I mean, Sebastian's only a 2022. I am the second owner, but 
still, I, I don't know. A new battery already, I find that really just sad, but it is what it is. Luckily, it was covered under the warranty, has a new battery, should be good to go to Texas now. So Teddy and I did a celebratory car wash and vacuum afterwards, and I think I was gonna film more after that, and then we didn't. Teddy and I just went, got groceries, and then came home. So there was the final ending of our crazy, crazy uh, little mishap. Ah, that was quite a fiasco, huh, Sebastian? We went through quite an ordeal to get you back, but we do have you back. We're giving you a nice bath. Teddy is with me. We figured start by cleaning you up and then stay tuned folks. I'm gonna tell you everything that has happened in the last 24 hours with our uh, repairs for Sebastian. Uh, you feel like you're under the sea buddy? Under the sea. Under the sea. Are you having fun Teddy? Hey Teddy I got you on camera honey. Yeah look at all the pretty suds huh? All the soap getting Sebastian. We actually didn't really need it washed because they washed it at the car dealership, but he needs a vacuum. We need to vacuum, especially since we don't have Lucy with us. Good time and you get the vacuum free, so you might as well just go through the car wash to be able to vacuum easily. So that's what we're doing. sports car wash here in Homestead, so we used it before. Alright, I'm almost done, so I'm going to have to drive here in a minute. I, I swear there's just some kind of vendetta against us, but nobody will fix this tire. Left the car lot, the tire with a PSI of like seven. So luckily they have air here at the vacuums too, so alright, let's go somewhere a little bit quieter.